Hello everyone. Thank you for stopping by. This is Sandy from Color Creatively and we're going to do part two in Botanicum on our second buddy color. And I did work out a little bit of some colors from my polychromos that I'm going to use to do some shading. And uh, I will um, read you the color or tell you the color when I get to it. Um, I sort of wrote down here where I'm going to use it on the page, too. Sometimes this helps to make a sheet up ahead of time. Um, so let me put that here under my mat so I have it handy just in case. Well, I will refer to it, not just in case. Okay, let me go back to the page we were working on. Let's see. Here it is here. I want to have my cardstock behind it. And that's deli paper that I use. Okay, um, I haven't set these pastels at all. I won't do that till the very end, till I'm finished with the drawing. Uh, I use the deli paper. This is what you wrap sandwiches in um, to put my hand on so I don't smear things as I go. Okay, so let's get started. And... Um, I did do this little bug. I had him colored in gray with the uh, pan pastels. And, and let me tell you, on the background, I did not use pan pastels. I used Mungyo pastels, and I'll list that below. On everything else is pan pastels. Um, what I did here with the bug is I have the pan pastel down, and then I went over it with this shimmering... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I, my voice is fine till I get on camera. This Classic Metallics uh, Comarivi by Mozart. I love these uh, metallic paints. They're gorgeous, and I'll list those below. These you cannot go wrong with. Um, and putting the uh, metallic paint over the pan pastel is not a good idea. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to go with it, and we're going to uh, finish this. I did the same thing here. I had a moss green, and then I went over it with this, which is Kuretake Gem Colors, and there's a green in here. I'm not real fond of these because I feel like when I use them, they have a brownish or a blackish tone, especially the purple. So, But it, it looked good here, and but that's just... I guess what I'm trying to say is first use your metallic and then go over with a little pencil or pan pastel or soft pastel if you want. I don't think this was a good thing, but it was an experiment on my part, and I never know until I try things. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to work as much as I can in this video on shading of uh, this. We, remember, for you newcomers, we put down a base coat. I did the background, then we put down a base coat. And I'm not happy with my clouds. I think there's a little too many. Uh, let me show you the other one where it looks better. These clouds came out looking much, much better. So it just depends on how you use your stencils. And there's a video on that called Junk Mail and Found Objects uh, stencil video that I made to show you how to make uh, this uh, stencil to do clouds in the sky with pastels. Okay, and anytime I use pastel, I'm either setting it with hairspray or wig spray. Um, my wig spray, I will list below. It The only difference is, is that it has a finer mist, so my page doesn't get quite as damp. But remember, just dry it out, and if you don't like it a little wrinkly, it uh, doesn't always happen. These are thick pages, so that doesn't really happen here. You can always put a heavy book on your, um, put something down like deli paper or cardstock. Don't use wax paper. And then put a heavy book on it during the night, and that should help flatten it out. But a little rippling of the paper doesn't bother me. Okay, what else can I tell you? Let's get started. Oh, I did do these in a phthalo blue, a uh, phthalo green, I'm sorry, because 
there's so much green in this picture that I wanted the greens to be all distinctive. And on the pan pastel, I realized that I have a basic set of basic colors and I can mix those and get a whole bunch of colors. So um, anyway, we mixed um, yellowish green and a green here and I, I think they look good. So uh, we're going to go and we're going to finish this. I'll do as much on this video as I can and then I will do the, the final final offline and at the end of the month, I'm going to have a video on all the completed pages that I've done this month. So stay tuned for that. Um, I don't think my video is going to be as uh, long as I would need it. I mean, if I'm going to do every shading that I do here, it would be so long you probably never watch the video. I'm, I'm not the fastest colorist, so I try to show you steps and phases and then you work on it and then we get back for another part and we do another portion or a different technique. So that's sort of where I'm coming from at this point. Okay, I am going to start by shading in the little mouse and um, oh I didn't sharpen that. I've sharpened all my pencils except the gray one. And I'm going to be using, I have to read my list because on polychromos they're in gold and it's very small. It's very hard to read. So I'm going to be using Warm Gray 3, 272 for the mouse. <clears throat> I know a lot of people pick out three colors, a light, medium, dark, and, and that's great. But I already have my light or medium or dark, whatever, however you want to look at what I put down with the pastel. So I count that as a color. And sometimes I use two colors. Sometimes I use three. It just depends. So my mouse has a light color, and I'm going in with a little darker one. If I feel he needs to be darker, I'll choose another gray. If not, we'll just leave him like that. There's no really hard and fast rules in coloring. Um, you color the way you get results. And everyone will get results using different supplies in different ways. And everyone has their own style. So there isn't a right or wrong. Um, just embrace your style. Whoops, I, I don't want to smear that. I didn't get my brush out here. I had to blow on that. Okay. So let's go ahead and color in this little mousey guy, a little cute mouse here. And we're going to work on this moss too. And that didn't get sharp enough for some reason. Let me try it again. Sorry, I should have had all of this organized. I thought I did, except this one color. <clears throat> My sharpeners probably need a new blade. There we go. Now I got a sharp point. Okay. Oh, let me zoom in. That's the other thing I always almost forget to do every time. I'm going to zoom in. I don't know why I have trouble zooming sometimes. Just bear with me. Okay. And now I'm going to... Um, get you back in the middle here where we can see what we're doing. Okay, that should be close enough. Okay, we're going to, I want to do this little line around his ears here, make that darker. And I will be blending with Odorless Mineral Spirits, which is Gamsol. I don't buy the artist brand Gamsol. I go to the hardware store and get odorless mineral spirits. You can also use odorless turpentine. Anything that a painter would use when he paints your house to clean his paintbrushes. And pour it into a small little bottle. This is a glass bottle that's a vitamin bottle that was left over. And then I, uh, these are inexpensive, these paper stumps. You can sand them to change colors. And I prefer this over using a paintbrush 
to apply it. I think it gives it a different look. But that, again, is a personal preference. Try different methods and see which one works the best for you. That's what I would say. Okay, my husband went golfing this morning. It's going to take five to six hours. They're playing a big game. And I thought I'd get in here and make a video and upload because um, when he's home, he wants to watch TV or play his games and everything in this house is powered by the internet so it slows my upload down quite a bit if he's on TV or playing his games so he's not going to be here I thought I'd make this video and it, hopefully it would take less time to upload depending on how busy YouTube is this time of day so we'll see but I got excited. Okay. Okay. I want to make sure I just shade him in a little. And I may turn my book from time to time, too. I hope that doesn't bother you. Now, see, when I put that darker color on, this looked dark, the pan pastel, till I put that um, color on, and it doesn't look that dark. But I'm going to darken it up here, and then I'm going to, actually, when I blend my pan pastel, I might smear a little. And then we'll see what the difference is between the background of the mouse and the shading. And if it's too drastic, we'll go in with a different color, uh, sort of a mid-range mid -range color or whatever looks good. Okay, we're going to get him... Uh, I'm going to try to make this video as long as I can so I can get as much shaded as I can. It's just like I told you, I'm not that fast. And I like to, the enjoyment for me and the distressing is to take my time and go over it. And he's got a tail here. And then go back over it and then look at it for a while. And just take my time, not just work through it. Now, I got that a little bit too pinkish, so I might add a little gray to it, tone it down a little. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we're going to do. Mm. Okay, let me uh, get out my mineral spirits and try a little here. I dip into it with my paper stump. It's clean. I sand it with a nail file to clean it so I don't transfer color from one uh, color to the next. And let me get a paper towel right here. I some dab it sometimes off. I don't want too, too much. Oops, that one, even though I sanded it, there's a red color coming through or pink. Let me sand it again. I didn't get the tip of it. That's what it was. You have to get the tip of it. Get that previous color off. And as you can see, this stump is getting shorter. Eventually, I'll have to quit using it and throw it away and get a new one. But I try to use them up as much as I possibly can. Okay, and they last a long time, and they're inexpensive. That allows me to push around the pigment into the uh, nooks and crannies of my surface of my paper. Okay. Just don't rush through your drawing. Take your time. Enjoy the process. Sometimes it's not the destination. It's the journey. And uh, you won't be so stressed out. And when I rush, I get myself stressed out. Uh, his hand didn't look very gray there, so I'm just going to go a little bit with my pencil, too. You know, I think I will get another little color of gray to go over him. Let me move some stuff here that I have. 
I've got a small desk and I need to look into my polychromos pencils. I didn't think I would need to get another gray, but obviously I do. Well, let me see this one, what color it is. So I can choose another one. I'm going to choose the next step up and see if that makes a difference. And I will sharpen it again. I have this little uh, microwave container and I keep my pencil sharpener in here, two of them, and the shavings, and then it's, it's portable. I carry it with me and take it wherever I go, and I've got everything contained in one spot. Okay, I'm almost there. There we go. We've got a sharp point on that one now. Okay, what I think I'm going to do with this is just go over him a little bit on the, over the um, pan pastel. I don't want to hide all of it. I sort of want to make a blend between the pastel and that color I just put on. But I want the shading to remain. So I don't know how this is going to come across on camera. Sometimes the colors don't look like they do in real. Um, so I'm going to make it look good for me and we'll look at it on camera and see what it looks like for you guys. I want to make this edge dark here where he's shadowed by the tree stump. I'm doing very lightly. Very, very lightly. And like I've told you many times, and uh, the newcomers need to know that I will put this aside for a few hours or a day and go back and look at the shading again. I either add to it or subtract from it then, and it looks totally different. Okay, you know what? Even with this dark color, I think I'm going to go in some of these little marks that are on this little mouse. And I need to get my contrast back to some degree. It took a little bit too much out. Okay. Okay. I think what I'm going to do with this little guy is leave him for... A little while, finish up some more of the drawing, and then come back to him and take a look at him. Okay, I don't know what he looks like on camera there. He looks a little lighter than he does to me. Maybe I need to fill him in a little more. Well, you say, why didn't you do the pastel? You could have just colored him in. Well, believe it or not, some of that pastel is still showing through. And it, this is still a lot quicker than trying to cut color the whole thing itself with just pencil, as you know. And then you'll get the white dots in your colored pencil, and that doesn't look good. So we filled in the hills and valleys of the paper without damaging it. I think he needs to be a little darker there. Okay, now he looks dark enough for me but I don't think he does for you on camera but we'll see we'll, we'll, we'll revisit it and normally I don't have him that pink but today I think I like him that pink okay before we do the um let me close that up oh did I go over him with the um no I didn't did I I sanded it off. Let me go over him with the mineral spirits. I did. I did. Let me blend him again. I love the way it looks. It takes on a marker look. The pencils when you use the solvent. At least that's what I think. Does not make your book gooey, oily messy, wet. It evaporates very rapidly. It's very clean. If you use Vaseline, 
or something of that nature, you're going to always have a residue and it never dries. Okay, I'm going to leave him like that. He looks pretty good right now. And we're going to see how things are as we progress through this drawing. Sometimes when you do one image, you'll find that you're not sure you like it. But as you get through more of the drawing, it looks okay. And if it doesn't, you can always fix it. Okay, let's go to some browns here. And I think I have this. I don't know how to pronounce this. Carpet Morton. And I have to see the number here because it's just too... Um, yeah, uh, it's sort of a reddish. I think I'm going to go with the Van Dyke Brown, the 176. And I just dropped my nail file, which I'm going to need for my... Let me get it. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to get it. It fell on the floor. And I'm going to need that for my stumps to change color as we go through this drawing. Okay, I don't want to shake the table. I hope I didn't. Come back here. Okay, I'll tell you. I'm in a really small room with a really small desk. But this is the best place in my house to be. Okay, let's go down here. There's a tree stump showing through. And we did go with Pan Pastel. It's a reddish one. I'm going to leave it reddish. I want that to show through. And uh, I like this Van Dyke Brown contrast. Uh, I want to go around the moss a little here at the base, but I don't want to take out all my pan pastel either. Okay. And then down in here is the tree. Now I did take and draw a line here because I think there was a line that the artist missed here. Otherwise, you don't know where the tree stump ends and the sky back there begins. So it looked sort of funny. So I took a permanent, very fine tipped pen and drew that line. Sometimes I've noticed that there are lines missing in drawings that the artist probably didn't see. Okay, and we're going to work on this here a little bit. And it's shaded, so there's a cast shadow from the plants. I don't want to fill it all in, though, because I want to see my pan pastel. Okay. Even if I were to color, cover, color over it, you still would not have white spots like you would if you just used pencil. Okay, let's try to shade this a bit. Wow, we, my husband took my little chihuahua out for a walk, and we didn't know, but one of the neighbors at the other end of the street has a huge boxer dog, and that dog came running after my dog to attack it, and my husband couldn't even get to my dog fast enough. But my dog ran all the way back to our property. And she was petrified. She was not, I, she doesn't bark. I don't know. I've never heard a dog scream. I guess that's the right word I'm going to use. And it was so loud that it brought uh, three of our neighbors out of their houses to see what was happening. Because it sounded like. A person, you know, um, 
being, I don't know, tortured. It was really, really loud and frantic. And it was my dog as she was running. And when she got to our property, she turned around towards this boxer dog, which was very big, a lot bigger than her. And she bared her teeth. And that dog stopped in his tracks. And he got scared and he ran away. And she was just protecting her property, her territory. I was just... I was just flabbergasted and amazed. But then she was so shaking the rest of the day, and she wanted to sit on my lap. She wanted me to hold her like a baby. And then when I went to bed, she crawled on my pillow up by my head, and she couldn't get close enough to me. She, and then she would go under the blanket, and she would literally lay on top of my chest and today she's okay. She seems back to normal, but it scared her. And um, it scared us too. And the neighbors came over to my house and knocked on the door and asked if my dog was okay. They were so, uh, they saw it and they were so upset over it. And I don't know, this is a new neighbor and they're moved in with this dog and obviously they're not keeping it in their yard. And there is a leash law. You cannot let your pet run wild. If your pet gets out, you're still responsible. Okay, we did a little shading there on the tree trunk. And I'm going to go over that too with the um, odorless mineral spirits. But I want to make sure that I've got the clean tip. Okay, I guess I sanded them both down again. That's good. Okay, my favorite size on these is a number two. I think it picks up the right amount of, of uh, solvent, and yet it allows you to have small enough spaces to blend in. I really like them, and I keep, keep them on hand. And even if I'm not using solvent, you can use them to blend the different art mediums with. They're very cool. So I just want to go over that to blend it out in there to make it look a little nicer. We had a real scare yesterday with those dogs. And my husband hasn't been down to talk to the owner of that dog. So I wanted him to. I'm, af I'm afraid of other people's dogs. Um, unless I know your dog and I've come to your house before. Um, I used to sell Avon door-to-door, -door, and one time a man let his dog out after me. He didn't know his wife was buying um, Avon, and he was supposed to be at work, but he was home. And he opened the gate and let his vicious dog after me. And I was screaming, trying to get in my car. I think I screamed so loud, I scared the dog off as I was at the door of my car. And he was jumping on my car and bit me. And after that dog bite, I, um, I just am real freaked out unless I come to your house and I find out your dog will get to know me and we can be friends. Okay, so that looks pretty good right now. We'll see what happens later. Okay, let's do the moss. Um, I have some colors here for the moss that I worked up. I want to use an earth green, 172, a permanent green olive, 167. It's a dark color. Chromium green opaque, 174. Now that's the numbers in the polychromos. So let me get out those colors here, and I've got them mixed up with the other ones. Permanent olive, okay, and we want chromium, and I wanted the earth color, and I'm going to put that back. Okay, so what I want to do is go with my lightest color first. There is a little bit of shimmer on this. I think you can see it 
from that watercolor, but I would never put it over pan pastels again. I would put it on first and then use pencil to do the shading like I normally do. But it's okay. We're going to work through it here. Okay, let me see how that looks. Sometimes I don't need all these colors. And other times I think I do. I think... I just need to go with maybe the medium, yeah, uh, the uh, light one and the dark one because this background is the medium color. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the earth green and use these other colors. There's lines here that the artist put in, so I'm just going to go over those. And um, darken those. And I will use my blending solution. And you know that um, metallic watercolor sort of streaked there over the pan pastel, but I can see as I put this on. That's probably that streaky look's going to make it look more natural. Sometimes there's happy mistakes, so embrace them and just go with it. That's what we're going to do here. I almost wrecked my drawing. I just sort of skip around as I do this. And there's a lightness here. I'm going to leave that because... We're picturing maybe the sun coming this way or the artificial light source or a natural light source is what I should say. I'm just going to go with this uh, permanent green olive. I'm having a hard time seeing with my glasses today. I think I need to get a little bit stronger reading glasses, I'll tell you. It's not fun when you can't see really well. I'm just going to put a little of this medium color here. And we'll go around it with dark. I want to put a little here too on the edges. Okay, some in here. It's a, going to be 107 degrees here today. So I'm worried in a way about my husband and his friend playing golf in this kind of weather. But you know golfers, nothing is going to deter them from going out there. So he took a big lunch, lots of water, lots of electrolyte drink with him. I'm going to go around the edge here so I make it a little distinct with this darker color. Okay. The artist didn't make this moss that detailed. Yeah, if I would have went first with the metallic Japanese paint, then it would have been a little shimmer, more shimmer, which is what I probably wanted. But I went the opposite over the pan pastel, so don't do that. Unless that's the look you want. I switched. I'm going to go back to the dark one. Maybe a little more, and then we're going to blend and see where we're at with this. Go around the edges, though. Here, I miss that, I miss that. I'm 
my dog is a rescue dog and when she was in her foster home before I adopted her, they had big dogs that would attack her too or not let her eat and she was so skinny she hardly had any weight on her. So she's just been from an abused home to homes where dogs have attacked her and now this is a, a, the second a, a dog that's went after her. And she's as sweet and docile. She is not an aggressive dog. Um, but my husband took her for a walk uh, somewhere else, and a dog came out of a yard out of the clear blue to attack her. So he carries a stick with him now because he doesn't know how bad it'll be or if those dogs are going to hurt her to the point where it's real bad. We don't know. So I don't know. We'll see. I just get paranoid when people do not um, obey the law and keep their dogs under control on their property. <clears throat> and especially when you're on the receiving end of it, it's not sort of, it's not very nice. Okay. We're going to smear that a little. So our lines are not sharp. We're going to blend them out. That's what I like to do. Not a straight line. You know what? That one needs a little bit of color here. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I hope it's not too hot and uncomfortable in your neck of the woods. It's beautiful here in the desert. It's just this time of year can get pretty hot. But I have my air conditioner working now. For those of you that were following my videos, you know we lost our air conditioner for a while. We had to get a new one. Okay, I'm going to leave that right now like that. Actually, while my stump is still damp but not too wet, I am going to go over some of those areas so that it's not... It'll sort of soften the contrast. And then if I don't like it, if there's not enough contrast when this dries, I'll go add some more. Even that light spot, it'll stay light, but it's not going to look like it's harsh. I just want it blended. Okay, now on the camera, I can see it just totally looks different than what it looks to me. But I'm going to leave it right now and come back to that part of the drawing. Okay, now... Let me keep my deli paper under my book here. I will put my hand on it. I've probably been doing it without it. I don't want to smear things. Okay, let's take care of some of these leaves. I am going to use May Green 170 and Earth Green Yellowish 168 for these leaves that we've already put two colors on when we did the pan pastels. Just remember, for those of you that are on a budget um, or have no access to pan pastels, you can use any pastels. They're very inexpensive for a set of soft ones. And I'll put the name of Mungyo down there. I recommend them. And you get 64 half sticks that will last you years. I'm wondering, I think I want to leave, do I want to leave the edges light like that? I think I might. Let me go do it this way and then I'll come back to it. And if I don't like it, I'll 
add some more to it and change it a little bit. That's what I do. And I want to get the stem in because that's going to make the leaves look different. What I need to learn and where I fail a lot is leaving some white space. You know, that's also important in our pictures is to leave some white space, the white paper showing through. And I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, always do that. I feel like I have to color it all. And it's just hard for me to do that. So I'm trying to learn. Okay, and I will go back and um, blend this with the mineral spirits too. Let me see how much time we've got into this video here. As you can see, I probably am not going to get the whole thing done, and we're already 40 minutes. <clears throat> But you'll see how I do it, and then you can do it your way, or you can copy my way. Doesn't matter. It, it, what matters is the end result. And the fun you have. Keep this fun. Don't make this a chore. Let this be your relaxing time and your de-stressing time and the time you forget all the problems in your life and in the world and just enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Sometimes the repetitive motion of a real detailed painting is what is so relaxing to me. And not always finishing it the first time I sit down. Okay, I like that so far, but I, I have to see it later. I'm going to work on some of these leaves, and then from there, I need to work on the stems maybe. We've got a lot yet to do here, but we can finish this. Not on camera, I don't think, but we can finish it. Okay. So there is three colors here. There's a light, a medium, and a dark, darker one. I may make more contrast. I may not. I met a friend and we went to a ladies' Bible study yesterday in the city, which is a ways from my house. And um, it's about 20, 25 miles. And met with a group of other ladies. And I'll tell you, it just feels so good sometimes to get out and be in a woman's group. And you know how women talk women things. That's sort of nice. And they're very friendly. And it was just an awesome day. We didn't go out to lunch because I wasn't feeling well. I'm hoping to start feeling better. We'll see. Okay. Let me blend out a couple of these and see how they look. See what they look like. Okay, let me blend out a couple of these and see what they look like. Just uh, determine whether we're going to come back and do something else to them. Or I'll look at them tomorrow and see. I don't know. Put 
those colors together look sort of cool. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll see. I'll have to take a look at it later. I hope you have pastels and you're using them and enjoying them like I am. I try to take the pan pastels or regular soft pastels and paint what I call paint the whole picture as much as I can with the pan. In fact, this is pastel here. After my first part, I did go over it with, um, I did go over it with the pan pastel and a Q-tip. So what I'm going to do right now, because I see the video is pretty long and I've got a long way to go. Whoops, there's my mouse. Oh, great. Um, that I'm going to let you finish shading. Um, my computer is telling me the frames are being dropped. So I hope this video comes out after spending all this time here with you. I'm going to say goodbye and finish it on your own. And then you'll see mine in a next video. So until we meet again, happy coloring.